everyone. So pleating by dots is a way to pleat without a pleater, and it is super easy. Sure, it's nowhere near as quick as using a pleater, but if you're not sure you want to invest in a pleater yet, or maybe you're just fed up with your pleater, say if the needles have been breaking on you or something, give dots a try. So there are two kinds of iron-on dots, and I will link where you can buy them below. Actually, no, wait. I think there's only the green package still available. Scratch that. I'm sorry. And of course, with my luck, I chose the red package to demo, but the instructions are the same for both packages. Um, I bought my dots about a year or more ago, and I'm finally getting around to making this video. And I've heard that since then, the dots may not be in production for much longer, so if you like them, get a bunch while you still can. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty sad how these smocking and pleating tools keep getting discontinued and that's kind of one of my goals for this channel is to spread the popularity for this dying art so it's not so much dying anymore. <laughs> Anywho, getting off my high horse. So first you'll iron your fabric really well. For the project that I'm making I decided that I wanted about two and a half inches worth of smocking. I guess it's actually two and a quarter inch worth of smocking since the top row and the bottom row are holding rows. And I have a video on how to smock that explains the whole holding row thing and I will link that down below. So once you cut your strip out, you'll position it where you'd like it on your fabric. And two things to keep in mind. First, you want to keep it evenly spaced from the top of that raw edge. And I went with about a quarter inch gap between the first row of dots and that raw edge of the fabric. Then second, you want to keep the rows evenly spaced from the side edge. The spacing may be different for your project, but I went with a head with a half inch spacing for my project. Once you have the spacing how you'd like, then hold it down and carefully iron over it. It's important to use a dry iron. Turn off the steam since the dots come off with water. And my iron was on the highest setting, but a lower setting should work just fine if you need that for your fabric. So this was my first time using iron on dots and actually this was my very first pass at it. And I was very pleasantly surprised with how super duper easy it was. Seriously, super, super easy. And then the cheapness in me thought, hmm, I wonder if I can reuse this strip or if I have to cut a new one every time. And well, that answer kind of depends on how good your eyes are versus how cheap you'd like to be. <laughs> I mean, these strips are only a couple dollars. Farmhouse is selling them for seven dollars. But if you are a penny pincher, I would say you could use the strip twice. And on the second round, fill in the missing dots with a water-soluble marker. So anywho, then you'll take some, and I'm going to mispronounce this, y'all bear with me, meserized, meserized cotton? Um, between being self-taught and having a skill for mispronouncing words, I have been mispronouncing that word for years, and unfortunately, it's really hard to correct things that have been printed in my brain. But anywho, I used to say mesmerize, and I've come a long way. <laughs> So you'll want to use the mesmerized thread as opposed to regular sewing thread since this stuff is coated with like a cellulose fibers and this makes the thread really strong and kind of round if you will. So here I'm showing it next to regular sewing thread. It's just a polyester regular sewing thread. And you can see how the pink mesmerized looks round and full. And that's those cellulose fibers that they then put through a heating source to smooth out the fuzzies, if all that makes sense. But the bottom line is that you really want to use that thread instead. Sure, the regular sewing thread will work, but it won't be as strong and it won't be as nice to go through your fabric. The chosen needle isn't too important in my opinion. Um, I do prefer sharps and our millimeter needles, but really any needle that's not going to leave a huge hole in your thread is fine. So you'll take your threaded needle and center the dot on that needle. So basically having the dot centered means the pleat will be where the dot is. Now how much fabric you leave between where the needle enters and exits the fabric and the dot will determine how far up your thread is on those pleats. So here I'm showing another sample. You can see that both the dots are centered but for the first dot, the threads are close to where the dot is, whereas on the second dot, the threads are further away. And when I make the pleat, you can see how that changes where the thread is on those pleats. I hope all that is making sense. So going back to my project, I just continue to thread up each dot. Try to keep the dot centered and evenly spaced. And while this definitely takes longer than a pleater, it does go by quickly. And if you're only doing a handful of smock items throughout the year, it may not be worth it to you to invest into a smocking pleater. So iron on dots are a wonderful alternative. It's one of those projects that you can sit down with a glass of wine or a cup of tea and 
and watch a movie while you pleat your fabric. So one trick to making things go faster is to pleat every other row as I'm showing here and then knot the rows together in groups of twos on the end and pull the threads on the other end so the pleats are drawn up tightly. Oh and sometimes the pleats need to straighten out on the bottoms. Just give those a light tug and everything should go right into place. You can see I'm just giving those a little bit of tug and it just falls right in when it should, where it should be. <laughs> so the trick that I'm showing is now that the pleats are all drawn up by the alternating rows, you can fill in the missing rows by going through several pleats at a time. And this makes things go by so much faster as you can imagine. Then you can join the new thread by knotting it into the existing knot. So you'll have knots in groups of three threads total. Say that ten times fast. Three threads total. <laughs> and there you have it, pleating by dots. The dots come off with water and then you're ready to smock. Again, I have a video on how to smock and I'll link that below. I hope this was helpful. Please leave any questions in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.